Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by the REC Toycast. I'm your host, Roman Chavez. With me, as always, Eric Icarus. Just straight up bomb dude. <laughs> bomb dude. Eric Icarus. Uh, Represent you, for all the bomb dudes. It's, that's good, man. That's what we need. We need you to hold it down. We need you to hold it down, you know? I hung up my hat, boys. <laughs> you did, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Still, yeah, still a dime, I'm, you though. I'm, ha- I'm happily married. Yes, you he know? is. Yes, he is. I, 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 gotta, I gotta scuff up the dime, okay? <laughs> you know, I shine too bright sometimes, okay? You can follow us on Instagram at REC Podcast. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast. And you can follow Eric at Gulag underscore J underscore Wilden on the Instagram. On, on the Grom. On the Grom. Um, Eric. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've been you've been one of the lucky ones, man. You've been working. You know, it's it's been in flux because. Yeah. It's been like, oh, I'm not working. No, I am. Nope. But now I'm back, kids. Yeah, I'm back, baby. And I'm, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's this weird thing. And, and, and I don't want to be insensitive to those of us who have not been able to work or our jobs yeah. have terminated us. But everybody I know who is working, they like... There's like a bittersweet. It is. They're like happy to like be getting an income, but they're also like, ah, you guys have the days off. Yeah, yeah. And it's not work like you think work is. Yes. It's a different kind of work, folks. It's not what you're used to. I want. I want to. I want my old work back. Yeah. (laughs) Until I think until we're all back, everything will not seem normal. No, God, no. So in keeping with uh with uh, with that sad part of the world, yeah. Uh, we thought we'd talk about some of our favorite. Uh, kind of, I, I don't know how you want to say it. Not just deaths, but like moments that kind of made us, yes. that choked us up in the medium. In the Most, c- let's stick to mostly comic. Sure. And but there's, there's a, yeah, there you go. Um, Based on a, a, a comic book source material. Yeah, let's com- keep it there. There you go. Comic book source material. Um, would you like to kick us off or would you like me to go do, ahead, my man. do the dirt? You go ahead, Fresno. Um, probably one of the saddest moments in, uh, in comic books was, uh, the death, spoilers, the death of the Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh. Um, in the Ultimate Universe, uh, it was it was a, a a new kind of Marvel universe created in uh, 2000 2001, Ooh. and it was kind of reimagined. We've talked about it briefly on here before, but reimagined and tried to be more, somewhat more grounded. Right. Um, less us going to space. And fighting, you know, firebirds of rebirth and, and aliens. It was more about s- s- staying to that friendly neighborhood spider. Right. Uh-huh. Really doing stuff in New York. And one of the smart things that they did with Peter, uh, the ultimate Spider-Man, was that they really kept Peter. Like, we're, we're rolling with Peter all through high school. Right. You know, initially, they just kind of grow him up too fast, it feels like. Okay. And, and in the ultimate universe, I mean, we're really, like, watching him deal with, like, being a teenager and also being Spider-Man. Um, towards the end of Peter's run on the book, uh, he ends up getting shot, taking a bullet for Steve Rogers. Yep. And as he's bleeding out, the, sec- the Sinister Six are, like, ravaging his uh, Aunt May's place. So he kind of gets over there while he's bleeding out to fight the Sinister Six. And our Sinister Six in the Ultimate Universe are kind of juiced up a bit. They have a little bit more power. Like, the, the Green Goblin is literally, like, this mutated... Yeah, he's like a goblin. ...fire-breathing goblin. goblin. He's a goblin. <laughs> and, uh, and Norman is there and all Green Goblin out, and he's coming for Aunt May. He's coming for... For uh, Gwen Stacy and for uh, Mary Jane, like he wants to make Peter hurt, <laughs> and uh, uh, Peter ends up having this really great fight with him and ends up having to kill Norman in the in the in the in, in the, the melee battle. But while they're fighting, like he kind of like smashes this like gas tank on him and it just explodes, and it throws Peter back. It you know it kill basically kill essentially kills Norman Osborn. And, you know, Aunt May does know that Peter is, is Spider-Man at this time. And she kind of pulls his mask off and he's like, are you okay? He's like, are you safe? He's like, you know, I couldn't save Uncle Ben, but I could save you. Oh. And he straight up dies in, in Aunt May's arms. And, oh, my God, it is the most freaking, it was just so sad. Ugh. And, oh, it choked me up. I'm like getting a little tear. Yeah, dude, that is it. rough, man. And there was a great cover to the book that I don't have. And it's a, uh, uh, it's. A, a shot from behind of Peter and Uncle Ben, and Uncle Ben just with his arm around him saying, "You did good." Oh. And the cover is just white. Oh, it was so good, man. So good. So sad. Jesus. So sad. I when I read that book, I put it down, and I was just like lip quivering. Uh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump on to this one, and you can help me with this one because I, I I've only briefly read the um, Messiah Complex. Oh yeah, okay. uh, one time through, and uh, at this point. You know, we weren't uh, talking comics that much. No. So uh, my dad told me to read it. Yeah. 
And Psy Complex X Men. Yes, book. there we go. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's why you know here for the foot uh, footnotes because yes. Uh, anyway, I, can you just give me the broad strokes of the story? So there was a a, a, a mutant born, um, and actually this might have not been in Messiah Complex. This was actually in, um, yeah, because Messiah Complex was the first book. The okay. Second book was was Second Coming, and uh, uh, yeah, we get this character hope who was like the first mutant born since this kind of decimation happened and there had been no more mutant births for quite some time. Okay. Even people who had mutant powers, the powers were taken away by the Scarlet Witch during House of X. That's right. Yes. Um, so we had this girl, this baby born, everybody and their mom wanted this baby. Cable takes the baby into the future to keep her safe and he kind of raises her there. Well, her kind of destiny is to come back to the, to the current timeline and like, you know, lead the mutants. Okay. Um, so this is her, like Cable's able to get a message back to, to the present and like, hey, we're coming, but other people know we're coming as well. So oh, like you man. guys gotta help us. And so okay. coming back, take it away. Coming back. And basically I think they um job Rogue with the task of getting her back safe, yeah, chaperoning Rogue, her to the mansion yeah, or Rogue and or, Nightcrawler are part they they put out several teams because they know where there's going to be temporal displacements, but they don't know which one like cable might even be like creating fake ones to throw other people off. Gotcha. So Cyclops sends teams to each oh, place. The, okay. And Rogue Rogue gets the uh gets the job of okay, when you get hope, you need to be juiced. So she like puts her arms out and all the X-Men kind of grab her arms so she's got all the X-Men powers. Right. And she's ready to throw down. Yeah, because then Bastion and Nimrod show up, right? Yeah, yeah. Looking... Bastion is an old is an old uh X-Men villain just Hell bent on, on 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 killing the human race. Nimrod is a sentinel from the future who can adapt to powers. Can, yeah, knows all the X Men powers because it has future knowledge and this and that. And they've been screwing around with this thing we've talked about even in our uh, uh, um, what was that episode we did with the with the plagues? Uh, just oh, a few episodes back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our favorite. Uh, the phalanx or whatever. Yeah, yeah basically or the legacy the, virus yeah, or whatever. They're, they're basically like the phalanx. So he's this robot from the future with. With alien tech. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Yeah. And basically, uh, Rogue's holding them back so Nightcrawler can get hope. Are they going to the island? Yeah, they're trying to get to Utopia. The Utopia. island that the X-Men kind of have. They're like, hey, if you're a mutant, you're you safe need protection. Here. You, it's sovereign, safer. basically. Yeah, it's sovereign. It's off the coast of San Francisco. Right. Basically Alcatraz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, Rogue buys Kurt enough time to get hope. You know, out, but yeah. he teleports states away. If I'm correct, states and that, away, that's like, not his ability. He can't do that. No. He usually can only teleport someplace he sees or someplace he's known. Right, but not over great distances. And every time he teleports, it takes a lot out of him. Right, it's tiring. So going across states to get away, and before you, you know, you're rereading this, he's got hope with him. You're like, oh, they made it. And then it goes to the next panel, and he's got Nimrod's arm through his chest. Yeah, like he was taking a Nimrod was with Bastion. Nimrod was taking a swipe at Hope to like kill her. Kurt teleports in front of it to grab her. Yes. And as he's teleporting, it's kind of just that one of those things. Uh, he teleports like the arm through his chest, so it brings it with him. And it's just this great sad moment where he's looking at her, and she doesn't even understand her place. You know, it's that whole thing. Yeah, it's, she's it's a like kid. Jesus. You know? Yeah. And, you know, he looks at her, and, and if you know anything about uh, Nightcrawler, he's a devout Christian. Yes. Catholic, Catholic. More, more than anything. Yeah. And he looks at her, and he says, I believe in you. Yeah. And his dying words. His dying words are, I believe in you. And he just falls over with this mechanical arm sticking out of his body. Yeah, and it's, for one of the most beloved characters in the X, the X franchise, it was devastating. Oh, yeah. And just, you know, you know he's, Kurt, Kurt or Nightcrawler, whatever you want to call him, he's just... Him to make that sacrifice and to do it just without any thought, just yeah. like I'm doing this for my my people, yes. you know, and just laying it on, the, laying his life down for that. It was just drawn so well too. Like the look on his face, the look on Hope's face, yeah. was just it was awful. Yeah. Like I was like shocked yeah. when I saw that because she doesn't want anybody to have to die for. Her, no, you know? nobody She's, wants that. No, and uh, yeah, and it was like people it's brutal. Died left and right. It was brutal. Yeah, and that was the yeah. I think there was a few people who died in those that course of that, right? Yeah. And that was the one that hit hit me the hardest. Like, oh no, not yeah. Kurt. <laughs> and then, yeah, that a, a, he's a, fa a he's a favor, favor out here. Big big favor. 
favorite. Yeah, but when you saw that, were you like, because you didn't see it coming, obviously. I couldn't either. believe it. Yeah. It's like, oh. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was rough to it was rough to go through. I mean, he's back, obviously. Yeah. Yes, you know, they're, they're vacation deaths in, in <laughs> comics, you know, and that's too bad because you have you have this stuff that really it's an impact. Yeah, it, ha- it has weight. Yeah, has there weight. you go, weight. Yes, um, and it kind of undercuts it, like well. But you gotta admit, in, the, in those moments you're reading it, it hits you. Oh gosh, like like a knife. You know, you're like, oh god. I mean, I heard the reasoning they have to use these characters, and after a certain amount of years, it, it reverts into the public domain. Yes, if if they don't do anything with them, it can go to public domain. Yeah, and they lose a Nightcrawler. You know, you're not trying to lose Nightcrawler. You're not trying to lose Colossus. <laughs> That's why they'll they'll you know if a character's been dead for a while, like they'll uh, they'll do like a mini series, like oh. This was an untold story. Yeah, yeah, right. You know? just, to, just to keep it going, keep it, keep it keep in it circulation. Going. But yeah, that that one was rough, man. Mm-hmm. Couldn't 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 believe it. Yeah, they. Uh, there's a great. Uh, there, there's a ton of great moments in this. I, I've referenced the story a lot. Um, it's called Marvel Knights Four. It's about the Fantastic Four uh, uh, being sued by New York for like the the uh, damage that they yeah. caused, even though that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and there's a lot of great moments in there. Uh, one of them is John, uh, basically the Fantastic Four, they, they lose, they can't be superheroes anymore. Right. They lose the Baxter building and they have to get like regular jobs. <laughs> and while that sounds like boring, it just made for, for it's some hilarity. I love yeah, that book. It made for some interesting storytelling because yes. Reed couldn't get a job anywhere because he's too overqualified. Right. Um, but Johnny, uh, decides to become a firefighter. Um, and there's this, uh, it's like during the winter in New York and these kids, they say that their buddy uh, fell in the ice. And the firefighter's like, you know, we can't like get down there. Like The ice is too thick, this and that. And uh, Johnny hadn't, you know, he's still kind of like learning. And he ends up going into the, into the water. And, you know, his body's just hot. So he can like get down there. And he's down there for a long time looking. And he comes out with this like wrapped, you know, blanket right. body, you know. And it was just like really... There was a lot of like sombering parts of the storyline, and it was just like this real thing where like Johnny's been like the the faux actor, sure. uh, this kind of like playboy, right? Uh, you know, fast cars, fast women, girl, yeah, fast women, and you know he wants to use this chance to like do some good. He still wants to be a hero, and the only thing he can do is be a uh, a firefighter, which obviously is is a real hero and a real heroic thing, and him just and like, it's delicious this. irony. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah, I need to be around you. I cannot control this. <laughs> no, and it was just like this very sombering moment where um, it didn't matter that he was Johnny Storm. It didn't matter that he was the Human Torch. Uh, just like this random thing that happens in real life, you know. Yeah. You know, he just has to, had to say, you know, I had to get this kid's body. Right. Like you said, who he was or is didn't matter at that point. No, yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, being a hero, you lose all ego mm-hmm. to be a hero. And that's, I think, maybe was important for that character, Johnny. Yes. Who was full of ego. That's oh, yeah. basically yes. who he yeah, is, yeah. you know. And it's having hot to, it. yeah, hot, <laughs> boom. <laughs> and having to let go of it, yeah. you know, to be part of this, you know, band of brothers. Because, you know, I know some firefighters and, man, they, they, they are, oh, yeah. they, they, they are, man. And having to make the tough call and go down there. I mean, I don't know if he was at risk at all, but no, no, you like know, his body just runs hot. Like he's fine. Yeah. yeah. It, but it's just, you know, having to go down there. Did, did he save this person or I no? Know, the kid's dead, man. Yeah, See, like, that's, yeah, that's like, a tough thing. Man. The kid fell in the ice and like, they were like, yeah, like, we can't find him in the, in the, in the firefight. Like if Johnny wasn't there, they wouldn't have been able to find the body. The, the See, there's the closure. Yeah. So like he, you know, helps this, this woman with her son. Right. Because you know he's able to go down there, and it, like I said, it just didn't matter. Like, it was, like I said, it was very just somber. It was such it, a somber. It, and it's such an interesting take for the Fantastic Four, yeah. who are you know very known to be very upbeat characters yeah. and kind of the not funny but just family friendly yeah. almost. You know, yeah, very much. You know, as much as those Fantastic Four movies weren't that good, right? The kind of it kind of got the tone. Yeah, it, it kind yeah. of it got the tone a lot, especially with Johnny and Ben. Yes. So seeing the, you know, so imagine that Chris Evans. Yeah. You know, yeah, storm, pulling up a pulling up a dead body from from a lake, a dead you know? child nonetheless. Yeah. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, it was so brutal. So, oh. brutal. you know, I got it. I got an interesting one. Okay, and I don't know if you've read it, and it's it, it it's from All Star Superman. Uh huh. And he's when he saves that uh the woman from suicide. Did mm. you read that one? Uh, it's this goth girl. 
She's it's, about. I don't think that's from All Star Superman. It, I remember it being from a uh, uh, the JSA, and uh, she's like talking about how. Um, oh, that's a that's a great moment. So yeah, it's this goth looking girl. Yeah, this goth chick where she's like saying like I'm I'm nothing. Yeah, I'm nothing. Uh, and uh, then Superman shows up out of nowhere and says, "You're stronger than you'll ever know." Yeah, and you just got to realize it. And it's it's cool for these comic books to have little moments like yes. this because. You know, we're, we're used to seeing Superman fighting Darkseid. Yes. You know, hanging out with Wonder Woman and Batman, going going to different planets, fighting all these super-powered villains. But, to, you know, he probably obviously heard this woman yes. talking to yes. herself or see her, you know, in distress. And then take time to be like, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, don't, don't do this, you so know? Here, let, let me, yeah, let yeah, me you can set the scene more. a little bit better. Let me, let me set it up for you. So this Superman is the Superman from Kingdom Come. And something happens during, you know, remember in Kingdom Come when the atomic blast goes off? Okay. So simultaneously, a character in our universe is opening a black hole. And they just kind of, you know, comic book science it. <laughs> when, that, when that atomic blast goes off, it blows him through this, this wormhole. Okay. Right. And he's in our world. And he looks like Superman, but he's older. You know, okay. He's got the gray on the side sure. of his hair. And the JSA find him. And they don't know what to do with him. So they're like, the, the JSA are talking in this other room about... Like, well, you know, we spoke to Clark on the phone. He's going to get here as soon as he can. Well, that guy says he's Clark. So he can hear them. And as he's hearing, as he, as, as the Earth 2 Superman is listening to them talk, you see, like, a little word bubble. It's like, nobody will miss me. Oh. And then you, you kind of see him, like, focus on that. It's like, uh, nobody cares about me. I should just end it. Right. So he's like, all right. So he, like, starts to walk out and they're like, whoa, 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 we can't have you go anywhere because they don't know who he is. He, right. he says he's Superman, but... You know, they, for all they know. He's like, look, I have something to do. And yeah. they're like trying to stop him. And because he's an older Superman, like the older Superman gets... Oh, he's full of radi radiation. Yes, the more sun he's taking in, yeah. he's way stronger. Oh, yeah. You ain't stopping him. No, so they're like trying to stop him. And he's just like beating him off crazy. <laughs> and uh, uh, and so he just like super speeds out of there. Right. And you see this girl, she's, she's, she's like, you know, I'm just going to go. And she jumps off and he catches her and he says that stuff yeah. to her. And it's a very sweet, sweet thing. And it was like, for the JSA, they're like, oh. That's Superman. That's Superman. Right. Okay. It was a really like, you're cool good, way. Man. Yeah, it was a really cool way for them to uh, show, you know, to prove who he was. Right. And what he is. And it was a very sweet moment. And it was a cool me. moment. Yes. But again, you know, a little moment. Yes. It's, you know, and it, it's... Yeah, it had nothing to do with the rest nope. of the story. Nope. It was just a sweet moment. A cool character moment. <laughs> and a good moment to just, you know, everyone's had dark thoughts. But, mm -hmm. you know, just to see maybe your, your favorite superhero... Going into a moment like that and realizing, okay, well, you know, I know these these are fiction, yeah, but you know, you can pull a lot from yeah. it, and you know, sometimes you got to listen to Superman, kids. Yes, don't end it. <laughs> yeah, you know, to stay on the on the uh, on the JSA. Tip, oh yeah, the JSA is is a they're kind of the the golden age of heroes, right? And their their storyline is a lot about legacy. So you'll you'll see people who are. Uh, uh, you know, children and grandchildren and even cousins of other heroes take up an old mantle. There's a character named is Liberty Bell. And Liberty Bell came from two parents. Uh, her mom was Liberty Bell and her dad was Jesse Quick. Okay. Jesse Quick is a, was a speedster who thought that his connection to the speed force uh, was a scientific connection, not like a mystical okay. or, or a religious kind of thing. Sure. Like the old... Um, the Golden Age Flash, the one with the, like... Oh, the Hermes hat. helmet? Yeah, yeah, the Hermes helmet. Yeah. You know, he just, like, I can tap into Speed Force on faster. Wally kind of sees the science behind it, but it's also, um, the, it's a living thing. Okay. But Jesse, quick, he is very much like, I figured out this equation. Okay. And this equation is how, is my connection to the Speed Force. It's science. It's math. Because he's, like, a college professor. Oh, okay. So, and his daughter, uh, Jesse... She idolizes him. And uh, so whenever he goes into, uh, you know, his speed, he, like, talks about this equation. And it's like, I don't know it by heart, but it's like ZX2, blah, blah, blah. Right, and right. he's able to, like, tap into the speed force. So he teaches Jesse this. So uh, Jesse, uh, her parents end up divorcing. And she spends a lot of time with her dad. She kind of like, oh, I'm going to be the next Jesse Quick and this and that. Well, her father ends up dying. Right. And uh, when they kind of had a fight, like the last time that they okay, saw each other, right, right. and ever since then she can't use the speed force. She can't. She can't. The, the it doesn't work for her. 
Huh. But she did also inherit her mother's powers as well. So she has super strength. She's okay. kind of semi-invulnerable. Okay. So she ends up taking on her, her mother's mantle. And she marries this guy, the Hour Man. And he's gets, he has super strength one hour at a time. Very, very old <laughs> school. Very old school stuff. Oh, that would be a, that's a pain. Well, oh, you, 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 mm-hmm. this, they don't use this character often because he has to take a pill. <laughs> and he's like addicted to it. Like, okay, they, they yeah. Story uh-huh. where he's like, he can't be the Hour Man anymore because he's too addicted to like... Being the hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ripe with metaphor, kids. Ripe with metaphor. Ah. But there's a wonderful story where they have this character, Damage. And Damage is almost somewhat like a living bomb. He kind of absorbs kinetic energy. Can, you know, when he hits you, makes a little blast. Oh, okay. But he's a pretty boy. Okay. He's a pretty boy. And um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, he ends up getting really, like, beat to crap by uh, Bizarro. Oh, really? He scars up his face. Oh, he's man. messed up. And the JSA are, like, trying to bring him into the fold because his father was a member of the JSA, and he's just, like, mentally broken because of this. And he had, when he had, like, kind of woken up from his coma from being beaten by Bizarro, he, like, blew up the hospital that he was in because he was so shocked at how he looked. Mm. So he's not allowed in Virginia. That, that, that's, like, his hometown. It's yeah, like his home state. Right, right. Um, and the JSA, like, well, we'll take him. We're going to help him rehabilitate. And Liberty Bell and the Hourman really take... They're like they're like this loving couple, All right. and they like kind of they want to take damage. He starts going by damage under his under their wing. Right, right. Um, well, Zoom, who was a Flash bad guy, he's kind of like the Reverse Flash, but he his powers are more time based. Okay, so he's moving fast because he's actually moving through time, not like super speed. Gotcha. And he he was an ex cop, and he's obsessed with making heroes better. So he does terrible things oh. to heroes. Because they're going to get better because of it. So he's not really... He's I mean, bad, but like he thinks... He's he bad for a purpose. He thinks it's coming from, from a place of good. Gotcha. So um, he's at this, uh, uh, at this museum, and he's got like hostages at this museum. Well, guess where the museum is? Yeah. It's in Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the JSA are responding to it, and like they get to the state line, and they're like, yo, you can't be here. And he's like, what? Yeah, they're like, hey, you know, this was our deal to get you. Like, you can't. He's like, hell, this is like my home. Like, this is like right, right. I go to this this museum. And they're like, sorry, man, you got to stay here. And he just like, screw you guys. And he like blows up to like, you know, launches himself like into. And they're like, oh crap. So they get him. Uh, they get uh, they get to the museum, and damage is not only there, but he's got he like got the drop on on zoom right and he's like charged all this kinetic energy so that if zoom tries to like speed Boom. out it'll it'll make him explode oh and liberty bell and our man are like let us go talk to him and they go in there and and, and she's she's telling him you know she's like you gotta stop this like you haven't done anything that we can't fix and he's like he's like nobody will love me he's like he's like i look like a monster right he's like but at least if i can take out a monster right He's like, I will, I will have made the world better. Right. You know, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember all. No, no, all those that. are those are the sentiments. That's the sentiment. Yes. Yeah. And so she tells him, she's like, look, she tells him about her father and about how he died and how she lost her connection to the Speed Force because she didn't feel like she was worthy. Right. To to carry on his name, she's she's like, she's like, there's no reason I can't tap into it, but we had a fight, and I never got to apologize, and. You know, uh, my, my connection is gone. And I never thought that I would feel love. She's like, and then I met, and I can't remember the hour man's real name. She's like, and she taught me how to love and taught me how to be a hero. Right, again. right. She's like, we can teach you. She, she's really trying to get to him. And you see him, he's like lit up and he's all charged. And, you know, he kind of like calms down. And then Zoom is gone. And he's like, I can't believe you talked him down. And he picks up this like sharp, like piece of shrapnel at super speed. And he chucks it. And as he's throwing it, he's like, don't worry. You guys will be better heroes because of this. And just chucks it at super speed right at... Uh, damage his face and damage just closes his eyes like he's gonna accept it and then Liberty ZX too to, to, oh. and she's able to, she super speed catches it shuts it back at Zoom and it hits him in the head like knocks him out and uh, and, she, and they're like what and like she was able to reconnect to the Speed Force to save her friend dude it was so sweet it was such oh, a sweet, man. sweet moment in comics didn't see it coming had no idea it was what it was gonna be about yeah. and it was just oh Hits just, you, man. Oh, it hit me so good. And I hope I'm explaining this for our no, readers, no, I, to our listeners. I, that I always tell people, man, like before we started this podcast, I used to, when we would, you know, hang out and I would ask about certain books and comic books, 
I would just love you to tell me about it because I could see it in my head. So no, no, you're doing great, man. Okay, well, yeah, I, yeah. I hope so, and I hope, I hope that. Yeah, I, I can hope see I it. A bunch of stuff no, your out. kids are lucky because you're a great storyteller. You've always been a great storyteller. Well, thank so, you, man. Yeah. I just hope I leave enough out to where you guys read it and right. it still hits you the way. Sure, it man. Yeah, I mean, obviously these are all spoilers. They're all spoilers, guys, and, and maybe I'll remember to type that. Yeah, in yeah. Video. But there's such great moments, and that's the thing. Like this is this was one issue. Yeah. This wasn't this wasn't like. You know, usually a story is six issues. Sure. This this was one issue and a six issue thing, and it just like, you know, it's about them putting the band back together. Right. Hey, we're legacy. Let's get the, the legacies together. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it was such a great thing. It was written by Jeff Johns. Hey. Of course. Um, and it was fantastic. It was absolutely hey, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's crazy because there's so many we can go through, and I, I'm gonna talk about uh, the one that kind of hits me just because I'm an animal lover. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Dex Star. Dexstar's Dex origin. If you don't know who Dexstar is, he's a Green Lantern villain, ish. More or less, he's a Red Lantern. Okay, he's a and, Red Lantern. And the Red Lanterns are often at odds with the Green Lanterns. <laughs> and Red is rage. Red is rage. Okay, so yes. those imbued with this power are just few, pure rage, right? They're pure rage. They, 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 they throw they, up blood on yeah, you. Basically, it's like it's red energy, but it like comes out. It looks like blood. Okay. And like if it gets on you, it makes you a little ragey. Oh wow! Yeah, like, <laughs> like it makes you like you know, basically you rage until you die. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So, and their powers in their heart. So if you the, take their heart out, they... the, well, the ring replaces their heart. Oh, okay. So like when they when the ring comes onto them, it's like boom 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 boom. Ooh. boom, boom. It, it's a very cool like sound effect that they put in. Oh, it. that's awesome! Yeah. But uh, Dexstar is a cat. If yeah. those for you who don't know, cute cat. Yeah, you know, it's a black kind of striped cat. Uh, you know, he was abandoned as a kitten, mm -hmm. uh, adopted by this kind of a kind of homely lady. Not maybe was she homely or kind oh, of a shut in? Just a shut in. Yeah, just a cat lady. Yeah, cat crazy cat lady, and that's the only love he's known. And uh, burglars break into this woman's house, uh, kill her, mm -hmm. and kind of leaves Dexstar abandoned on the streets. Yeah, because they close off the the house for the crime scene. Uh, at this point, some ruffians put Dexstar in a bag and throw him into a river yeah. and that's when he hears the ring calling him yes. and he turns into this rage cat and kills those those ruffians yeah. and it's it's sad because you know as an animal lover just as a person who's only you know maybe only known a little bit of like con connection mm -hmm. with other people and having that taken away from you yeah. you know we all can maybe know what that feels like and then being, you know, maybe abandonment on some levels, but then just it kicks over. Then you're like, okay, this poor cat's lost to rage now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and he's going to die eventually from rage. Yeah, like it, it, for, for the for the rage lanterns, the red lanterns, the rings come to you when you're just yeah, you're raging. You like know, you're at your terrible. angriest. Yeah. yeah, at your angriest, and then it gives you the power to kind of get your revenge. But it is fleeting because at some point you're gonna. It, it, you're just going to do too much. Like you, the red lanterns, they burn out. Right. You know, they just burn out because you can't be that angry for that long. Yeah. It'll, you know? it'll burn through you. I mean, which is a cool, I mean, this is all rife with metaphors, man. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love, again, that's why comics are brilliant, man. Yes. You know, and uh, it, it just drawn really well, told really well. And I've always aesthetically loved the cat and didn't know his story until a few years ago when yeah. I asked you about him. Cause I saw him on the injustice game. Yes. And I was like, what, what, who is this cat? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, he's with, he's always hanging out with a uh, Atrocitus. Atrocitus. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Atrocitus and Bleez. <laughs> um, <laughs> that that rogues gallery. Yeah, yeah. Bleez, but, uh, Bleez is an interesting character because a lot of the Rage Lanterns their their backstory is tragic, be tragic, very tragic. Yeah, she was like this beautiful like princess on her planet, and they all have like wings. And uh, she, had, I, if I remember correctly, she kind of like denied the advances of this you know suitor. And, uh, and I think he like rips her wings off. Oh! So then the rage, you know, the rage takes her. So she's got these like crazy bone wings because like the the the, the construct. Yeah, is yeah. Like... It's like yeah, it's it's really it's really. Oh crazy. man! Yeah, she she's a she's an interesting character. But, yeah, they they all tend to be a little tragic. I mean, uh, that's where well, a lot of rage breeds from that. Yeah. So I mean. Right. We could we you know we could talk about Kitty if you want another Kitty. <laughs> I, I you know I, I think we'll save that. Well, for we should episode. save that one. I want to I want to leave this on, on a high note. Oh, I, we I, should. I, 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 okay. I want to talk about a, a kind of sweet moment. In okay. Comics. Cool man. Maybe, maybe this show is, is just it's things in comics that made us feel. And, okay. Uh, fair enough. There's an interesting uh, you know we reference Civil War a lot and the death of Captain America. Yeah. Um, and in the kind of in the aftermath, you have a lot of changes happening in the Marvel universe. And one of the big changes that 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 came about was uh, Thor had been dead at this time. You know, 
as as gods do, as comics do. <laughs> and he gets kind of reawoken in an old host. Yes. Years and years and years ago, Odin actually banishes Thor from Asgard to learn humility and binds his soul with this doctor, this like a gimp doctor <laughs> named Donald Blake. Uh, he has a lame leg. And has to walk with a cane. Shillelagh. Shillelagh. <laughs> and uh, so Thor can't be Thor all of the time. He has to share this kind of crippled right. body with this guy. He slams his cane on the ground. He turns into Thor. Right. Well, Thor, after the kind of the events of Ragnarok, Thor's soul finds Donald Blake's again. And he's like, oh, man. And he's like, oh, dude. He's like, I'm just trying to do doctor stuff. <laughs> and so Donald Blake becomes Thor again. Um, after the and this is after the events of Civil War, and Thor is compelled to go and visit Steve's grave. Right, and it's this great thing where you see Donald Blake go to the grave, throw the cane up, hit the ground, change into Thor. He says, I don't even know if he says it in like Norse, like rune kind of like script. Right, but he waves a hammer around, hits the ground, lightning hits Steve's grave, doesn't destroy it or anything like that, and then there you see a manifestation of what we assume is Steve Rogers. It's a person all in white. You can kind of see the star underneath right. the white robe. And uh, and basically Thor is asking him, if, uh, you know, how he's doing. Yeah. And Thor, you know, they kind of have a small conversation and he's in, it's just this great, great line where Thor tells Steve, he says, if you ask me to, I'll avenge you. And Steve tells him that he's fine. He's like, you know, I'm at rest. Like, yeah. It's okay. He's like, you know, don't don't do this. For yeah, me. don't don't perpetuate. This, yeah, and it was know? just this great thing. I, I had never thought about that. Like, what happens when the Avengers need avenging? And right. it, was, it was the first time that I had ever it had ever been thrown in my face like that. Right. And I thought that was just a sweet moment between like warriors and friends. Between, yeah, between warriors and friends, because you got to assume that uh, Steve has access to Valhalla. Sure. You know, so, oh, yeah. you know, so it, it, it's just like, I don't know, it's just a very, very sweet moment where, you know, between two old friends, two old warriors, yeah. and hey, man, like, I wasn't there. Yes. So if you need me to, I I'll, can do some dirt. You know? Yeah, for sure. We're just, it, it, I love that's that. a good point. That's you a know? good way to put it because he wasn't there. He wasn't there. No. We anyway, got I Robot remember. Thor. Yeah. Ro yeah. Right and Hercules right. got a little mad about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was a, uh, quite the moment as well. Yeah. And no, that's a, that is a great moment. Drawn really well. Yes. And, um, yeah, just, again, you hit, hit every moment, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's cool just to see those two characters interact like that. Not necessarily as superheroes, just, but as just, friends you know yes. it's, it's cool to have that like yeah like you said you know man i couldn't be there for you then but i got you now yeah but yeah. then steve being steve i can do the dishes yeah you know <laughs> uh you know and yeah i can i love it i uh, you know it's it, i hope what our listeners can get from this is just like the if you're not reading comics because i know we do have listeners who don't read them no we, we have yeah and hell you don't even read half I don't. You know? so, I give you. I get what you give me, <laughs> yeah. unless it's Daredevil. Yeah, what I got, you gotta get. <laughs> okay. um, on that note, kids, I, I hope you like the show. Um, I hope this en encourages you to go read some comics. Go check out some things. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Leave us a mm -hmm. like. We didn't hit all the moments. No. There's way more. There's a lot more we were uh, going to talk about, but... Post a couple uh, in, in the comments yeah. below, and, and, and you know, let, let's get a dialogue Let's get it going. going. Uh, Eric, my friend, do you have any final thoughts for us today? You know, I think, like you were saying, I think uh, a lot of people don't... A lot of listeners don't... You know, they know the movies, mm -hmm. the comic book movies, but I feel like there's a lot more of these moments that happen in these books than they do in the movies. So maybe this will be... Compel people to go maybe check out the books. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're full of these moments. Yeah. These are just a few moments that we're just picking out. And go find your own moments. Because yeah. there's there's some we probably don't know about. Oh, yeah. Maybe not you. But yeah. there's some I don't know about. Oh, yeah. A lot I don't know about. You know, there, there's, you know, the way you felt when Tony Stark said, I am Iron Man and snapped his fingers. Yeah. You get that a lot. You do. Comics. You do. You get, that you get, a lot you get them comics. more. Especially when you get attached to a character and you get to see them do, you know, something, you know, uh, heroic. You get to see them do something terrible. You get to see them do something that makes somebody happy. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of those moments in comics. And, and I think for me, that, it's the redemptive moments for the, me. Those are the ones I love. Redemption. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of great redemption. When Hal, you know, uh, yeah. as, as Parallax reignites the sun to save yeah. the universe, well, our, un our galaxy, and to save Superman. It's it's a great moment. Yeah. It's a great moment when when uh, when Hal puts the ring back on. It's an even better moment. Right. So you know you get attached to a character in a story. Fortunately, you know 
in the comic book medium, you do get somebody else's visuals, but you do get to, they can't make you feel it. You got to feel it yourself and they, they lead you there. Yeah. So yeah. I hope this encourages some of you guys to go read some more comic books or to even just tell us on some stuff that, that we should go check out. Uh, for the RAC Podcast, I have been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm still Eric Icarus. And we will catch you next time.